Hey everybody, this is Brain Nectar, and today I wanted to talk to you guys about um, how to make your drawings or line art more three-dimensional. Um, a lot of people, a lot of people may already know about this, but like in softwares like Photoshop and maybe GIMP, but there's all the tutorials I've looked up uh, for the program Krita, uh, they're all right, but some of them didn't really explain just explain the basics of how this worked uh, very well. They kind of already assumed, um, but then again, uh, that I feel is kind of um, not the greatest thing to do because with Krita, it's still kind of new, or at least newer than Photoshop. And when you have a, a software that's kind of newer than a newer one, you can't exactly establish um, that people will know everything about it, even though um, much of the software UI may be very similar to other um, programs. Oh, hold on. All right, hey guys. Uh, sorry, I had to add in the rest of the narration post editing. But anyways, uh, so basically here um, you have your grayscale layer, and you want to take that. And you want to add a quick clipping group. If you guys ever get like um, an art studio or a room of your own, don't ever, don't ever share an art studio room. Have it all to yourself. Don't ever share. Is it roommates? Oh, here we go. Here, add a quick clipping group. And a quick clipping group will add uh, sublayers under it, which this is something I wish that uh, Krita, uh, Krita had. No, wait, sorry, I mean Photoshop. We are in Krita. This is something that I wish Photoshop uh, would have. I think they do have this, but they don't kind of like move. I don't think they move the layers over the way Krita does. But they do have mask layers. Um, it's just the way Krita organizes it is a little bit neater. Uh, but both softwares have the same thing. Um, so you have your mask layer. And in here, there is something called an inherent alpha. That's that little A with the strike through it. Uh, you're going to want to leave that crossed out. So if you have like your grayscale layer, and you have your characters drawn out, you put that mask layer over that and you um, uh, turn off Inherent Alpha. Here I'm uh, showing that uh, we have the background off and uh, we're turning it back on. Uh, the shadow is not bleeding over onto the background, it's staying right on your uh, cartoon character or creature. Um, it's very neat. Right now I'm painting in the, um, I'm painting in the uh, background for the wings. I'm going to kind of keep them kind of dark, like a silhouette. Um, and a lot of paleo artists and concept artists will also do this thing where you see um, that the back wings or the, um, the legs that are further away from us, those are like in the darkest shadow. They're like silhouettes. And then they're there, but um, for the information of the diagram, and then uh, you have like more shadow uh, further out. Now, you can also use the shape fill tool if you want to keep it kind of neat. I just used the airbrush tool because that was quick, uh, quick and it was soft. It had that soft touch that shadows usually seem to have. Um, But you can you can do it either way with the airbrush or the shape fill tool. Also, another thing I wanted to uh, point out and add is if you have like. Um, See, in the real world, uh, not all shadows are completely dark or solid black. 
some have uh, some transparency to them. Like, it just looks like dim light, or you can still kind of, you can still kind of see the object that is obscured by the shadow, but not in great detail. Um, you can see this on some afternoons, or um, near the end of a sunny day, um, and you can also see some of the darkest shadows. So, like in reality, with art, you want to have some shadows that are not completely opaque. Here, I'm lowering the opacity. Uh, you want to do it, and I'm also, um, doing this on a separate mask layer. I added another mask layer above my original. So, I'm not, I'm not blending in and merging with the, uh, the farthest back, um, darkest regions. Right now, I kind of have my, um, I kind of have the light kind of coming from the right side of the dragon's face, it, but it's, it's in the upper, it's on his uh, upper right side, or our upper left side, a little, uh, a little torch or a little lamp. So, he's just getting most of the light on uh, one side of his face and a bit on his uh, shoulders, um, but not really on his belly. Or tail that's uh, further away from the point of light. All right, I think I um, explained how to do this concept in Krita. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I really wish there was more videos like this on the internet. I looked and I couldn't really find any, but here I am. I'm making one. I hope this guy has helped you guys. Um, Krita really is a uh, versatile. It's really versatile and uh, wonderful. Uh, free Photoshop alternative. Um, it just doesn't get enough credit. It's for freeware. A lot of people throw it under the bus or um, just choose not to use it because it's, they say it's so hard. But this, this was easy. Like, you have your basics of drawing. You have your basics of painting. Uh, I hear Krita can also do animation. I may explore that later. And you can make drawings. You can make illustrations. Um, and, and in some game dev and movie studios, they don't really care what software you use. Some do, some don't. Uh, I guess with the ones that don't, you can use whatever you need. Or if you're making a game yourself, like an indie game, there's plenty of uh, wonderful freeware to uh, get started with uh, learning just how um, the basic concepts of like light and shadow or 3D and 2D work. Alright, I've used enough of your guys' time. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, so much, and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your days.